Now we're going to solve for the magnitude of an unknown distributed load W and a constant distributed load on the beam shown. And what we know is that above the roller, which is sitting right there, we're told that the rotation of the beam is half a degree clockwise. We also have a value for E. We have a cross section over here for the beam. So that cross section is in inches. E is in inches. But the beam has units of feet associated with it. So a couple other things to highlight. This is a determinant beam. Over here at the left end, we have two unknowns. We have a full translational restraint, but no tra uh, rotational restraint. Over at the roller, we have one restraint kinematic. We have a vertical movement restraint. So we have three unknown forces. And we have one member, an 18 foot member. So we have three linearly independent equilibrium equations. And the configuration of the supports is stable, so we end up with a determinant beam. So what we're going to do is highlight a solution by second order beam. Right, so again, what we're going to need is the moment inside the beam. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that beam at right, the whole structure free body diagram right, at the left end i've got two perpendicular forces f1 and f3 i've got the roller at b represented by force f2 and now i'm going to use a statically equivalent representation of the distributed load as a single point load that's going to make my statics a little bit easier to perform here and so i want to find the moment inside the beam and I'm going to be interested in the segment from A to B, from the pin to the roller. Right, this is where I want M of X. There's going to be a different equation for M of X over the last 8 feet. But we can solve the problem as asked with just the moment inside the first 10 feet of the beam. So we're going to take that free body diagram. And my idea is to solve for F1. And then we'll be ready to cut the beam open and find the moment inside of it. So I'm going to spin a moment over there at point B. So I'm going to end up with an equation that looks like F1 times 10 feet. I've got the statically equivalent representation of the distributed load. Right? That would be located at 9 feet right at the centroid. So I'm going to have a lever arm of 10 feet minus 9 feet or 1 foot. So I can solve that pretty quickly for F1. So I'm going to take and now substitute in that value for F1 sitting right there, which is W times 1.8 feet. And I'm ready to now cut this beam open. I don't need to solve for F2 to do this. I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to use the free body diagram on the left hand side and I'm going to define x equals zero at the left end and so when I cut that beam at a distance x I now have exposed inside shear axial and moment and there's my reaction and there's the unknown uh, f3 reaction force again to do the second order beam equation I need the moment on the inside so i don't have to solve for all the other forces here all i need to do is just go spin a moment right at the cut and then i will have m of x and then that will be valid for x from 0 to 10. so the equation looks like i've got the force times its lever arm of x and i'm going to use again statically equivalent representation of the distributed load that's going to have a value of W times X. That's sitting right there. It's going to have a lever arm of X over 2. at the centroid. And then I've got minus M of X. So I can just go ahead and solve this for 
m of x. So there's the equation that I need. That's what I'm going to put into the second order beam equation. And in a determinant beam, it will, there will be no red arrows in there. I won't have any unknowns. I know what the uh, internal moment is going to be for this beam. Boundary conditions. I've got boundary conditions at the left end of the beam. I have a pin. That pin restrains all translational movement. So I know that V at zero equals zero, the movement in the vertical direction or the up and down direction. I also know over at the roller at B, I also have translational restraint right, in the perpendicular direction to the roller. So V at 10 equals zero. So there is the second order beam equation. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in right there, the equation for M of X. We'll just go plug it in right there. And I end up with an equation that looks like what you see. And now I've got to just integrate this thing two times. And along the way, I'm going to use boundary conditions when appropriate. So again, my boundary conditions both involve deflection or displacement. So I'm going to integrate it once. So dipping back into our calculus class, I end up with a constant of integration C1. I have no boundary condition to apply here because both of my boundary conditions deal with deflection. So I'm going to integrate this one more time. And now C1 is accompanied with an X. C2 is sitting there. And so I'm going to solve for these two using the two boundary conditions. Often easier to start with the boundary condition at v at zero at x equals zero. So if I go into that equation up there and plug in x equals zero, I get a zero, I get a zero, I get a zero, c2 lives on. But over on the left hand side, I get zero. So I just found out that c2 equals zero. So I'm going to rewrite the equation just to keep us all on the same page. So c2 is gone. And I'm going to evaluate C1 by using the other boundary condition, the fact that V at X equals 10 equals 0. So we plug that in. I end up with 0. And all I've done is just plugged in 10 there, 10 there, and 10 there. And so you see it right there. 10 will cancel. That will give me a squared into the third. And so I'm just going to do my math. And I would solve for C1, and I end up with 11.667 times W. So that is the other constant of integration. Now I'm asked for the, I need to, I need to get back to the slope equation. So if we look back up here, this is the slope equation. So I'm going to take that, and I am just going to plug in the value that we just found for C1. And so if we do that, the slope equation looks like that. And now I'm going to evaluate that equation at x equals 10 feet. And when I evaluate it, I know that its value is going to have to be 0.5 degrees clockwise. So let's just go ahead and plug in x equals 10 to begin with. So it's just math here again. Plug in, and right anywhere I see an X, I put 10. I just do a little bit more math. My units are going to be feet cubed. And so if I just keep going, and I'm going to now get that back to inches because E and I are going to be in units of kip times inches squared. And I end up simplifying, ending up with W times minus 0 0.131625 inches over kips. And now let's get back to what we know about the slope at 10. I know that the slope is going to be clockwise. So the rotation here, there's over the roller, and a clockwise rotation would end up with a beam that would have a negative slope. And so I got to be very cognizant of units here. I was given information in degrees. I need to get that back to unitless or to radians. So I'm going to convert that out 180 to pi radians. 
And I now have my answer for what the slope over the roller is equal to. And all I'm going to do is just plug that in and equate it with that term right there. And so I end up with an equation that I can now solve for W. And now depending on what units you want to end up with, kips over inches, kips over feet, or perhaps pounds over inches. So that's the value of the distributed load W that has to be present on the beam for the rotation at the roller to be 0.5 degrees clockwise.